All right, folks, let's wrap up module 12. We are in Modern Americas and Contemporary Art Part 1. So this is, of course, contemporary art. Uh, we are looking at 1945 to 1980, uh, specifically 12.04. This is going to be about abstract expressionism and post-painterly abstraction. Two things that may seem very similar, but I'll explain the differences in just a minute. We've got seven core works and four supplemental works for this unit with a date range of abstract expressionism from around the 1940s to 1950s and the post painterly abstraction is from the 60s of uh, 50s to 60s and these are all in and of course around New York City as well as throughout the United States. So abstract expressionism um, we are seeing a couple of works here we've got Newman's um, One Mint One, uh, we've got Krasner's Untitled, Pollock's Autumn Rhythm number 30 and de Kooning's Woman One one, as well as Mark Rothko's uh, number 110 and number or number 210 and number 211. Then in our post painterly abstraction we have Frankenthaler's Mountain and, and Sea and Stella's The Marriage of Reason and Squalor number 2. And for your supplemental works for this unit we are going to take a look at Norman Lewis's Untitled, Hedda Stearns number 3, uh, Robert Motherwell's El El Elegy to the Spanish Republic, number 57, and Franken Helen Frankenthaler's The Bay. So let's talk a little bit about these two eras of artwork. We've got abstract expressionism from the 40s to the 50s. Um, it's really emerging in the United States particularly in New York City, um, after World War II, and it is really marking the shift of the art world center from Paris to New York. A lot of artists were leaving Europe um, and coming over to the United States, bringing all of those ideas with them. And so now we have this new art capital. So it was very strongly influenced by European modernists, thinking like surrealism and cubism, and as well as psychological theories, especially Carl Jung's ideas about the collective unconscious. And so this art movement is often seen as uh, an expression of individual freedom and emotion during the Cold War era, and it has a focus on spontaneity, emotion, and the subconscious, as well as non-representational forms, and it really does very strongly emphasize gesture and process, or the process of art making. So there are certain techniques that include action painting, which is the dynamic application of paint, think Jackson Pollock, for example. And then we also have color field painting, which is large areas of color with very minimal detail, which is something that Helen Frankenthaler was very, very, very strong at. And so abstract expressionism is, is being seen as very uniquely American in itself as a movement because it's reflecting this post-war optimism and existential introspection that is supported by these institutions like the MoMA as a symbol of freedom in contrast to Soviet realism during the Cold War. Now, moving right along to post-painterly abstraction from the 50s to 60s, this is a very, very stark, uh, this was coined by uh, the critic Clement Greenberg, and it basically is meant to describe uh, a movement diverging from abstract expressionism, which is attempting to emphasize more formal qualities of art, like color and shape and flatness, and rejecting this like very heavy emotional intensity um, and gestural style that we saw previously within abstract expressionism. So the movement has a focus on clarity, precision, and control, as well as the elimination of personal emote uh, or emotion. So art is about formal properties of paint and the surface that it is going on top of. So techniques include stain painting, um, hard edge abstraction and smooth unbroken surfaces and post painterly abstraction is a more uh, detached and intellectual approach to abstraction and is really setting the stage for movements like minimalism and op art while still reflecting the growing dominance of formalist art criticism. So to conclude abstract expressionism is focusing on emotion, individuality, and the subconscious while post painterly abstraction is centered on objectivity, formalism, as well as um, uh, uh, purity of art. Abstract expressionism is using dynamic and gestural impasto surfaces, while post painterly abstraction is focusing on the use of employment of smooth, controlled, and open flat surfaces. Abstract expressionism celebrates personal freedom and was tied to Cold War politics, while post painterly abstraction is moving away from political or emotional content and really just emphasizing the autonomy of artwork. So within the uh, pieces that you're going to take a look at, I have to say Krasner is one of my favorites. Um, there is a piece in the Carpino corner of my wonderful boyfriend having a little Ferris Bueller moment. Um, Jackson Pollock is a very interesting character um, with a very, very long uh, history and very deep um, 
history throughout his life that is is very intense. He goes through a lot of different things from literal birth up until death. Um, he struggled with um, uh, alcohol abuse, uh, depression, and maybe other thing, other different conditions um, and mental illnesses. But of course, we can't really diagnose um, uh, uh, people outside of our current time frame. It's not necessarily a responsible way of um, of like, not identifying them, but. Um, I guess putting a diagnosis on someone without um, them being in person, it's, it's, it, we can't do that exactly, but we do have records that show um, of him really going through quite a bit throughout his life that certainly affected uh, what you see today. And so Autumn Rhythm is an example of one of his most famous pieces. And what is really interesting about Jackson Pollock is that researchers uh, in the scientific level have done a lot more exploration into his compositions. And what they're finding is that Jackson Pollock is attempting to represent fractals. And so We've gone back in time and done a little bit of the medical diagnoses, and apparently he did once suffer from maybe um, occipital tremors or occipital strokes, which would have affected his vision. And so what's kind of unbeknownst to us is that all of these random paint splatters that Jackson Pollock seems to be doing at you know, with no real sense of planning and not necessarily subscribing to any kind of format or uh, a preliminary sketch he's just doing. But he's painting not on the canvas below, but he's painting in the air above the canvas. Those who have had the opportunity to see Jackson Pollock work are, are so astounded because it's almost like a dance that he does when he would make his paintings. And the end result is very strongly related to this uh, fractal organization. Now, I do not know anything about science, so I'm going to stop my explanation there, and if you're interested to do more research, I absolutely encourage it, but there is way more than just a bunch of splatters, because again, it's those kind of paintings that feels like, well, I could do that, so like, why am I not rich and famous in a museum? And of course, there's so much more behind it to that. Now, de Kooning is another really great one, um, definitely a big player within abstract expressionism, and his woman number one is really, really intriguing with the amount of layers that's on it, and it does remind me of those Venus figurines that we see in global prehistory, so another really awesome reference there. When we think about Helen Frankenthaler, uh, personally, the bay in your supplemental works is my favorite, but Mountains and Sea is absolutely amazing. Um, so I really hope you enjoy this kind of uh, a break away from really intense and focused detail and can find a little bit of joy in this sense of abstractedness that we have in contemporary art uh, between these uh, eras that we have here in these decades. So, all right, folks, that takes care of Unit 12, and I will see you later. Bye!